planet and quartz, which are commonly found on Earth but very rarely found on the Moon, were confirmed to exist on Big Bertha. By determining the age of zircon found in the sample, we were able to pinpoint the age of the host rock at about 4 billion years old, making it similar to the oldest rocks on Earth, researcher Alexander Nemchin said, adding that the chemistry of the zircon in this sample is very different from that of every other zircon grain ever analyzed in lunar samples, and remarkably similar to that of zircons found on Earth. This would mean Big Bertha is both the first discovered terrestrial meteorite and the oldest known Earth rock. Brusa spent almost two days alone aboard Kitty Hawk, performing the first intensive program of scientific observation from lunar orbit, much of which was intended to have been done by Apollo 13. After Antares separated and its crew began preparations to land, Rusa and Kitty Hawk performed an SPS burn to send the CSM to an orbit of approximately 60 nautical miles, and later a plane change maneuver to compensate for the rotation of the moon. The lunar topographic camera, also known as the Hikon camera, was supposed to be used to image the surface, including the Descartes Highlands site being considered for Apollo 16, but it quickly developed a fault with the shutter that Rusa could not fix despite considerable help from Houston. Although about half of the photographic targets had to be scrubbed, Rusa was able to obtain photographs of Descartes with a Hasselblad camera and confirm that it was a suitable landing point. Rusa also used the Hasselblad to take photographs of the impact point of Apollo 13's SIVB near Landsberg B crater. Rusa was able to see sunlight glinting off Antares and view its lengthy shadow on the lunar surface on orbit 17, on orbit 29 he could see the sun reflecting off the ALSEP. He also took astronomical photographs, of the Gegenschein, and of the Lagrangian point of the Sun-Earth system that lies beyond the Earth, testing the theory that the Gegenschein is generated by reflections off particles at L2. Performing the Bistatic radar experiment, he also focused Kitty Hawk's VHF and S-band transmitters at the Moon so that they would bounce off and be detected on Earth in an effort to learn more about the depth of the lunar regolith. Antares lifted off from the Moon at 1 hour 48 minutes and 42 seconds p.m. est on February 6, 1971. Following the first direct rendezvous on a lunar landing mission, docking took place an hour and 47 minutes later. Despite concerns based on the docking problems early in the mission, the docking was successful on the first attempt, though the LM's abort guidance system, used for navigation, failed just before the two craft docked. Equipment and lunar samples were transferred to Kitty Hawk, the ascent stage was jettisoned, and impacted the Moon, setting off waves registered by the seismometers from Apollo 12 and 14. A trans-Earth injection burn took place on February 6 at 8 hours 39 minutes and 4 seconds p.m. taking 350.8 seconds, during Kitty Hawk's 34th lunar revolution. During the trans-Earth coast, two tests of the oxygen system were performed, one to ensure the system would operate properly with low densities of oxygen in the tanks, the second to operate the system at a high flow rate, as would be necessary for the in-flight AVAs scheduled for Apollo 15 and later. A navigation exercise was done to simulate a return to Earth following a loss of communications. During his rest periods on the voyage, Mitchell conducted ESP experiments without NASA's knowledge or sanction, attempting by prearrangement to send images of cards he had brought with him to four people on Earth. On the final evening in space, the crew conducted a press conference, with the questions submitted to NASA in advance and read to the astronauts by the Capcom. The command module Kitty Hawk splashed down in the South Pacific Ocean on February 9, 1971, at 2105, UTC, approximately 900 miles south of American Samoa. After recovery by the ship USS New Orleans, the crew was flown to Pago Pago International Airport in Tafuna, then to Honolulu, then to Ellington Air Force Base near Houston in a plane containing a mobile quarantine facility trailer before they continued their quarantine in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory. The Apollo 14 astronauts were the last lunar explorers to be quarantined on their return from the Moon. They were the only Apollo crew to be quarantined both before and after the flight. These were germinated after the return to Earth, and were widely distributed around the world as commemorative moon trees. The mission insignia is an oval depicting the Earth and the Moon, and an astronaut pin drawn with a comet trail. The pin is leaving Earth and is approaching the Moon. A gold band around the edge includes the mission and astronaut names. The designer was Jean Beaulieu, who based it on a sketch by Shepard, who had been head of the astronaut office and meant the pin to symbolize that through him, the entire core was in spirit flying to the Moon. The backup crew spoofed the patch with its own version, with revised artwork showing a Wile E. Coyote cartoon character depicted as gray-bearded, pot-bellied and red-furred, still on the way to the moon, while Roadrunner is already on the moon, holding a US flag and a flag labeled, First Team. 
the flight name is replaced by beep beep, and the backup crew's names are given. Several of these patches were hidden by the backup crew and found during the flight by the crew in notebooks and storage lockers in both the CSM Kitty Hawk and the LM Antares, and one patch was stored in the Met Lunar Handcart. One patch, attached to Shepard's PLSS, was worn on the lunar surface and, mounted on a plaque, was presented by him to Cernan after the mission. The Apollo 14 Command Module Kitty Hawk is on display at the Apollo Saturn V Center at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex after being on display at the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame near Titusville, Florida, for several years. The SM re-entered Earth's atmosphere and was destroyed, though there was no tracking or sightings of it. The SIVB booster impacted the Moon on February 4 at 8.181 degrees south 26.0305 degrees west. The ascent stage of Lunar Module Antares impacted the Moon on February 7, 1971, at 0 hours 45 minutes and 25 seconds. 7 UT, at 3.42 degrees south 19.67 degrees west. Antares' descent stage and the mission's other equipment remain at Fra Mauro at 3.65 degrees south 17.47 degrees west. Photographs taken in 2009 by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter were released on July 17, and the Fra Mauro equipment was the most visible Apollo hardware at that time, owing to particularly good lighting conditions.